Today, I'm going to share with you the best supplementation for any of you who are seeking to prevent breast cancer or are looking to also address any of the changes in the breast tissue, i.e. maybe you have a little denser breast tissue or fibroids or cysts of the breast. These supplements overall are going to be extremely powerful at helping support and optimize your breast health. Number one, I love functional mushrooms. I talk about functional mushrooms all the time, literally every day with an assortment of my patients because functional mushrooms can play a significant role in enhancing your immune health and can also support assorted imbalances and, and address imbalances in your body that might be leading to the develop of denser tissue or the assimilation and the proliferation of breast cells. Mushrooms that we are going to find here in our 7M Plus, mushrooms have been studied extensively and mushrooms aren't plants and they're not um, living animals. They're in their own kingdom. And that kingdom, the fungi kingdom is a really unique kingdom in that we know that a lot of animals and humans can benefit from their medicinal properties. And I'm gonna share with you three of the mushrooms in our 7M Plus blend that have been extensively researched and can be quite powerful for any of you who maybe have a family history or if you yourself are concerned about some suspect tissue or monitoring tissue. So the first mushroom that is an amazing mushroom for breast cancer and breast cancer prevention is mataki. So mataki inhibits something called angiogenesis, and it also induces cancer cell apoptosis. So fancy words is it minimizes the cellular changes in the, the breast cells so that they are not going to change into cancerous cells. And they also, if there are cancerous cells, let's say precancerous cells, or even the beginning or latent stages of cancer development, it will create a cell death that occurs or apoptosis. That is the killing of cells, but specifically the cancer cells are going to be very susceptible to mataki. And that becomes really powerful, especially for some women who might be diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer. There's been research specifically on mataki in minimizing the metastasis the progression of that triple negative breast cancer. So I have patients in my arsenal catalog of patients who are thriving and living with breast cancer, taking mushrooms like mataki and the assorted mushrooms and seven M plus that are keeping the breast cancer from overwhelming their system. And many of them are seeing apoptosis. So that is extremely powerful. I love Mataki across the board. It's great for all of us, but specifically if you're looking at minimizing any of that proliferation, Mataki can be powerful for that. Now, my second favorite mushroom is Shiitake. Shiitake is very rich in selenium. Selenium is going to enhance the body's natural production of iodine. And it's more so, not, I want to say this, not so much the production, but the accumulation or assimilation of uh, iodine. Iodine is very protective of not just our breast cells, but all cells in our body. We see a greater proliferation of iodine receptivity in our breast tissue. And we can see when we enhance our selenium, it supports our thyroid, which supports our breast health. That particularly is important for many women who have different phases of breast density. And you'll know this, especially if you had a mammogram or any of the screenings, they will classify, you know, class three or four in terms of breast density. Now, the other mushroom that I love, I love, love, love is reishi. Reishi is extremely powerful. It will help minimize or inhibit the adhesion, the migration, and the invasion of cancer cells. And when we're talking about adhesions, you know, we are constantly dealing with cancer cells. Our body's lymphatic system is eliminating them every day. And it's only when they adhere to and migrate and proliferate 
that they become problematic. And a lot of it has to do with environment and other factors. Now, when we look at reishi, the studies on that shows that reishi will minimize that, that it's adhering to than the movement of, breath, of assorted cancer cells. And we also see it minimizes the receptivity to assorted hormone enhancing or hormone driven uh, breast cancer cells. So for women who are looking at a family history, you've got a mom, a grandmother, an aunt, even a daughter, anybody in your family that's had breast cancer, reishi is definitely up there with these other two mushrooms in helping minimize the risk of cancer. And then also for breast cancer patients, my thrivers and survivors, they've gone through mastectomy or a lumpectomy and cancer radiation surgeries, any assortment of those treatments. And now they're, they're in remission. Cancer is gone, but often they're being prescribed tamoxifen, which is a very common preventative after the first bout of cancer. What we find is reishi in clinical studies actually enhances the effectiveness of tamoxifen. And we're now at a 17, 18 year assessment of the effectiveness of tamoxifen at minimizing the recurrence of breast cancer. Well, reishi can be great for those individuals. Now I wanna share with you another supplement and you can actually find this in our magnesium seven. An assortment of magnesium types are really powerful at minimizing the risk of developing calcifications in your breast cells, the breast tissue, and even in the vascular channel of the breast. Magnesium is a calcium blocker. It's a calcium antagonist. It literally functions, magnesium will function like a bouncer, minimizing the articulation, the development of calcifications in the breast cells. It also does that throughout the body. We see that uh, minimizing arterial sclerosis and other uh, factors that might lead to stroke or heart attack. But particularly when it comes to calcifications in the breast cells, magnesium is hands down one of the most powerful things that you can do. So if you know you have some calcifications, one, cut coffee, because that tends to be a big factor, but add magnesium seven to your program because that can be very good as a preventative. Now, the other thing that I'm going to share with you is our joint and muscle care. I love this combination. In here, you're going to find frankincense, myrrh, and turmeric. Turmeric is a very lymphatic promotive herb. It is a very, very powerful promoter of lymphatic flow and helps minimize inflammation. A lot of women have breast cell infl inflammation, and, and there are inflammatory disorders of the breast tissue that is not cancerous, but definitely can be a sign or precursor to breast cancer. So lowering your inflammation levels is going to be helpful, not just for your breast tissue, but your overall health. Now, the other thing that we have in the joint and muscle care is turmeric. Turmeric has been extensively studied and we see that, and this goes back to the 2015 uh, research study. This paper, the study analyzed to the actual capacity of using frankincense oil to create cell apoptosis. Now we can tap into the power of frankincense by adding the joint muscle care to the program because to the combination of turmeric, lymphatic promotive and frankincense causes the apoptosis, the killing of these cancer cells. We need to clear those out and we do that via lymphatic promotion. And I'm really excited by that study in 2015, a lot of us were recommending frankincense and the research shows it is very powerful that the oil itself can be uh, something that the cancer cells are susceptible. They're weaker uh, in that influence. And then my last and final recommendation is adding vitamin D3. One of the things that we see is that women who have instances of assorted breast cancers, categorically across the board, they are deficient in vitamin D. And you're going to find 5,000 IUs in the turmeric 3D, the T3D. And on average, 5,000 IUs is a good base level. Some women may need to go all the way up to 30, 40, or 50,000 IUs, depending on your deficiency. And I dig into a lot of these resources in my ultimate breast guide. I have a course that digs into breast health. And you can really, really parlay a lot of that education into the supplementation and find out assorted ways 
that can fortify your system and really look at preventing any of the development of those environmental factors that lead to the proliferation of breast cancer cells inside your body. I hope you take these tips and utilize these awesome resources we have available for you here at Organics.